In this video, we're going to look at some of the new things that came out as part of Power BI's January 2025 feature update, including things like the updates that they made to existing visuals, like the text slicer and the tree map visual, version history for semantic models, and the new TMDL view. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. The first one that we're going to look at is Copilot, which now unlocks the ability for you to get suggested questions from your standard prompts. When you turn on this feature, you will get a new prompt called Answer a Question About Data, which will then give you some suggested questions to explore your data. Clicking any of these will generate charts or tables to answer that specific question, which is basically the same way that the Q&A feature does if you use that. What's interesting about this is that you can personalize the suggested questions that are being asked from the Q&A settings. So if you're more familiar with the type of questions that your users typically ask, this is a good way to kind of curate that experience and get those suggestions as a priority. So this is a feature in the January update, but it looks like it will be pushed back into February. So I'll cover it again in a future video just to see what has changed since then. There's now a new option called Explore This Data option in the Visual Options menu, which lets your users tweak the visuals from changing chart types, adding new data, applying filters, without needing to use Power BI Desktop to make simple changes. This is just a new entry point for users to explore their data via visuals, and you can also do this from the semantic model. Both of these options will give you some simple exploration and lets you get acquainted with your own model. And in fact, I have covered this specific feature in a separate video, so if you want to learn more about the exploration or the explore this data option, go check out that video. There's a new reset behavior in the storytelling for PowerPoint feature that lets you control what the default view is of your report. Previously, when you embed your reports using this method, the add-in from the URL will remember the filters that you've applied to that report so that it's always the default view, the pre-filtered version in the PowerPoint slide. However, you may have times where you want the embedded version to always show what is the current view in the Power BI instead. So to do this in the past, you will have to re-embed the report into your PowerPoint slides. However, from this update, you don't need to do that anymore. There is a reset behavior option now, which lets you choose either to preserve the pre-filters that you've applied when you embedded the report, or take the default view, which is what the view that your Power BI report users see from the Power BI service. They've updated the file picker in Power BI Desktop, which lets you save or open reports from OneDrive or SharePoint. This new update lets you do things like access your OneDrive and SharePoint reports easier, navigate around workspaces and folders within those workspaces, add new folders in your workspaces, pinning folders. And these new improvements are currently in preview features. So if you want to start using it, make sure you turn it on in the preview settings. There are some new enhancements to the text slicer, which now accepts multiple values. Previously, you can only input one text at a time, but now you have a toggle which lets you input multiple text entries into your text search. There are some new enhancements on the tree map visual, which is the visual that I use the least in the out of the box visuals uh, in Power BI. You can now choose from a range of tiling methods, which uh, is basically how your rectangles are arranged in the tree map. You have Squarified, which is the typical algorithm that is used to organize the, the tree map. Binary looks fairly similar. And then you have alternating columns and rows. They've also added the ability to create spacing between the different nodes, as well as spacing between groups to make it more obvious how they are grouped up all together. So this is handy because previously you could only use colors to denote grouping in the tree map, but adding spacing and different spacing between the nodes and the grouping would make it a little bit easier to kind of group up. Semantic models now support version history in the Power BI service. This feature lets you save up to five versions of your semantic model, which you can use at any time to restore to those versions. Versioning your reports is not a new concept for Power BI and I've covered it several times already. It's good that the Power BI team is making this feature a little bit more accessible within Power BI 
without using any external tools. The only thing that I can see from the documentation is that it's currently only for reports in premium workspaces or with premium capacity, with the promise to support pro workspaces in the future. So when it does go and become available for those pro workspaces, I'll start covering them in the future. There's a new TMDL view that lets you modify your semantic models using a scripting language TMDL without needing to work with the graphical UIs in Power BI Desktop. TMDL is a new definition language that was introduced a few months back. And its primary advantage is it gives you a way to store your semantic models in a text-friendly way. Initially, it was a great feature that allowed you to view your semantic models in a text editor and even version them like you do in kind of typical software development life cycles. Now, another benefit of this new TMDL language is it gives you the ability to make your changes to your semantic model through your code editor without needing to do it using graphical UIs in Power BI Desktop. This can make your workflow significantly faster, especially if you're trying to do things in bulk, which if you worked with Power BI Desktop before, is not very fast, especially if you want to do some things in bulk. But now you can do it all using this TMDL scripting language. It's currently a preview feature, so if you want to start using it, you need to make sure you turn it on in the preview settings options. And if you want to learn more about TMDL view and its capabilities and some of its real life applications, I'll have a look at covering it in my next few videos. So make sure you stick around for that. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was released in this month's update only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about everything else that was released, I'll leave a link to the full blog post below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so you have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.